Hey everybody, welcome back to the Readiness Channel. Today, I'm gonna to take this basic model Remington 870 Express shotgun. We're gonna strip it down and rebuild it into a more practical, useful, and reliable home defense tool. Okay, let's get the old bird gun disassembled. The first thing we're gonna do is visually and physically inspect this weapon to make sure that it's unloaded and I know that it's safe to handle. Now we'll remove the barrel, which is easily accomplished on the 870. Next, we're going to remove the slide assembly that handles the ejector bolt. And there's a couple of rails in here you have to depress. Next, we're going to remove the buttstock. You have to remove the rubber dampener pad from the back by two basically drywall screws, and that comes off. And now, we'll just reach up in here and we'll unscrew this long flathead screw that holds the assembly together. Remove the stock Remington 870 spring and follower assembly out of the mag tube. Simply depress the plastic retaining cap down, turn it a quarter to a half a turn, and you'll find that it slides past the two dimples that Remington now places in the mag tube as a way to retain all this assembly together. Now simply just take out the stock follower. Uh, the trigger assembly is still in place. I don't have any real reason to remove that at this time. And this is going to be the foundation that we start from for our tactical home defense shotgun. There's going to be six areas of improvement that we're going to focus on on this build. And number one is ergonomics. It's always been my complaint, and I don't know, maybe I have T-Rex arms or something, but when I shoot the stock Remington 870, my left hand is so far out forward on the slide in order to manipulate it that I have to place my hand towards the back of the fore end. The second area of improvement that we're going to make on this is going to be increasing the shell capacity or round capacity. The third area is we're going to address some low-cost parts and manufacturing standards. This 870 Express comes in at the entry-level uh, price point for the series and with that comes some some things that should have been done uh, at the factory but weren't and we're going to address those today. The fourth thing that we're going to address is maneuverability. The fifth area that we're going to focus on will be the front side upgrade. The stock Remington 870 barrel comes with a plastic bead type front side. The last area will be just a simple gun mounted flashlight. Okay, even though number one on our improvement list was ergonomics, I'm going to skip to number two first, and that was the increased shell capacity. And I'm doing that because we're going to be doing some work here on the front of the magazine tube and I don't want to get uh, gritty oil and other stuff down in the receiver once other parts are put on it. On the Remington 870s now, you'll notice that it has these two dimples in the magazine tube. And that's what holds the spring in. If you'll recall the other day, we took out this plastic follower past those dimples. But we're going to be mounting this Wilson Combat two-shot extension tube onto our magazine tube and to do that we have to remove these dimples. There are several schools of thought about how you do this. Some guys like to go in there and grind out the dimple inside the tube with a Dremel tool. Some people drill out holes in here to remove the dimple. All of those things evidently work uh, to some degree. I'm opting to go a little bit different route by using this swage tool uh, put out by excess sites and that's going to allow us to remove these dimples by a little bit of pressure. I'm going to put some oil on this tool here. I'm going to lube up the inside of this tube. This is going to have some pressure on it as we push out that metal so we don't want that grinding against each other real hard. When you use these tools, I'm not going to place the butt end of the stock down on a hard surface and pound on it and possibly risk dislodging the barrel uh, the way Remington has it mounted in there. If we do that, we've just got ourselves a, a parts bin here and not a foundation to build a tactical firearm with anymore. So I'm going to hold the tube here. I'm going to place this tool in here, and I'm going to tap it down by holding the magazine tube rather than putting that on a flat surface. So here we go. Now what we're going to do is we're going to work on these dimples a little bit from the outside, doing a little bit of sheet metal work, if you will. And that's what's going to allow that swage tool to come out after we've worked on this metal work here a little bit with a soft punch. 
we're just going to work this out. You can see how that's flattening up now. Now let's try the other side a little bit. Okay, I've worked on that metal a little bit with a soft punch, and I think it's pretty flat. I can still feel a little bit of an indent there, but one thing that I did notice is, is our tool is now freeing up, and I'm able to pull it out of the tube without all of this uh, rigmarole that you'll often read about by using vice grips and tying it to elephants and hitting them in the ass and everything else. So now I'm just going to check in here and I do feel just a slight bit of dimpling inside the tube still. And I think that'll be easily cleaned up by just using a soft cartridge roll that I'm gonna show you now. The way I'm gonna address that small amount of raised metal still in the tube is take a handy dandy cartridge roll. And I'm just gonna work a little bit of the in inside of this tube with it. That feels pretty good. We're gonna have a little bit of grit inside there that I need to clean out, and then we'll do a final check with our plastic follower. Okay, I placed a paper towel inside the mag tube before I started sanding, just to help prevent grit and things uh, working their way back towards the receiver. So now I'm just gonna take a tool and push that paper towel out, and hopefully that way we've gotten rid of most any of the grit that's coming in there, and then we'll just do a final blowout, and we'll be ready to go. The Wilson Combat Magazine Extension Tube Kit comes with their own plastic follower and just doing some rough measurements on it, it appears that it's very close uh, to the factory follower. There's maybe, uh, you know, five, six thousandths difference, something like that. The reason that we needed to address the dimples in this tube, because once we mount this extension tube onto our original mag tube, we need to make sure that these followers can freely slide past those where the dimples once were and that we won't have any problems feeding rounds down into the receiver. Now we're going to install our new buttstock assembly onto our receiver and while it may look like I went off the charts in the tactical uh, realm, the main thing I was really after with this kit here was the ability to have an adjustable buttstock so that I could comfortably uh, adjust this weapon to fit my particular build. Okay, to assemble this onto our receiver, I'm gonna replace the stock Remington steel plate. We're gonna mount our pistol grip assembly uh, onto the weapon. Okay, we've got our pistol grip mounted onto our receiver. The bolt is torqued to the proper spec, and now we're gonna screw in this tube assembly. For those of you that are used to working with ARs and that type of weaponry, this is all going to be very familiar to you. This is all very basic stuff. Okay, we're going to give that a, a snug with the armor's wrench. Okay, now it's simply a matter of opening up the buttstock assembly spring, sliding it onto our tube, and now we have the ability to adjust this buttstock where we want it with several different positions. I'm gonna start somewhere here towards the back, and you can see how by mounting this assembly on here, this has brought this weapon into a much more closer, uh, easily or managed uh, position for me to operate. This. A couple of key features I wanted to point out about this Fab Defense or Mako buttstock assembly as it's called in the US is it does have the spring dampening action to it which I think could be very useful in a shotgun application. Additionally there's a couple of storage compartments on here that you gear guys might find useful. The pistol grip assembly has this area here and additionally in the back of the buttstock we have additional storage uh, where you can put some batteries for a tactical flashlight and that type of thing. What the heck is that? You're kidding me. There's a compass in the stock and a thing that tells time. Now we're going to switch over our fore-end grip assembly to this tactical fab defense unit. That's going to give us some much needed clearance with the addition of Picatinny rails that will allow us to mount different accessories. So we're just going to simply Loosen up this factory nut. Take out that assembly. We're going to mount this into the new assembly. And we'll 
we'll tighten it down. Okay, before I can assemble the components onto our 4N and slide it into the 870, we need to stop and address one of our low cost parts and manufacturing standards uh, problems on this Express model. Probably one of the single most important upgrades you can make to an 870 Express model is changing out the factory MIM or metal injection molded extractor claw that is prone to failure and replacing it with a solid billet unit. We're simply going to depress the spring uh, in the bolt assembly. And I purchased a Volkortsen uh, solid machined unit for this build and that's going to greatly upgrade the reliability of this weapon. Okay, we're going to start assembling this whole component together and slide it into the 870. First, I'm going to apply a little bit of oil onto our rails here. I've heard a lot of critiques online about people uh, complaining their 870 Express models rust. and They do come with a uh, lower grade coating on them. It's not a parkerization, it's a uh, type of uh, black oxide or something like that. But if you keep your gun clean and oiled, you shouldn't have any rust problems. Over the years, I've seen a lot of guys uh, get confused when trying to assemble these pieces before they slide this foreign assembly in. If you look at the rails, you'll notice there are cutouts and they're different from each side. You'll also notice that this plate has the same cutouts that match those, so it can only go in one way correctly. Additionally, we know that we want our extractor to be extracting rounds out of this side of the weapon, so place this on top of that claw on that side and you're good to go. Now we're ready to assemble uh, this entire assembly into our 870. Okay, as we slide everything into the receiver, there are two metal rails that you'll have to adjust, allowing those components to go in. Okay, now on to our maneuverability upgrades that we're making to the Remington 870. In this shot here, you can see the difference between the stock buttstock assembly versus what we've added on there now, and this can even be adjusted to a much shorter uh, length. Coupled with the change of the long barrel to this 18 and a half inch barrel that I'm gonna be mounting on the weapon here in just a second. Before we install our new barrel, we need to skip back to our addressing some of the low cost manufacturing standards that make the Express model the entry level price point gun that it is. One of the issues that you'll often hear about is the difficulty extracting rounds out of the chamber in the barrel once they've been fired. And that's because this area right here is often just factory machined and coated with whatever type of protective coating they're putting on there and it's not uh, smooth enough to allow the rounds to go in and out smoothly. And we're gonna address that right now. To fix this, I'm just gonna rely on some good old hillbilly engineering. I've placed some fine steel wool on top of the mandrel and I'm just gonna stick this in here and give it a little bit of a polishing. We're not removing metal from this. We just wanna make sure that any rough coating or any type of overspray during the manufacturing process is smoothed out. And what this is gonna to allow to happen is our shells are going to easily go in and be extracted out of that bore without any hang up. You can see the smooth polishing that we've done to the bore uh, on this barrel. Additionally, a quick check has confirmed that I didn't really remove any material. We didn't change our dimension uh, at all on the barrel, but we removed and polished any uh, burrs or overspray the parkerization coating that they apply on these during manufacturing. Before we install the barrel, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Wilson Combat two round extension tube kit that we're installing on this build. The kit comes with their own high vis follower and spring uh, assembly. I found on this particular build that I had to shorten the spring up by about three and a half to four inches and that gave me the right compressed installed height and spring tension for what I need in this build. Your mileage may vary on that so do your own measuring and come to your own conclusions uh, when and if installing a kit like this. Additionally the kit comes with a wavy lock washer that what we're Understanding is from the information that's posted online by Wilson Combat is that you don't need to use that if you're using the barrel that has the ball spring detent installed on it like you see here by my fingernail. That ball sticks up higher than this surface here and is under spring tension. Coupled with the 
uh, dimples that are machined into the back of the Wilson combat uh, extension tube, that will help lock that in place when you tighten it down and hold it securely where it needs to be. If you were using a barrel like the 870 Express barrel came with that does not have a spring uh, detent placed in it, in that application, you would use the wavy lock washer. Install our barrel, which is easily done on the 870. Now we'll take our Wilson Combat high vis follower, place it in the mag tube, install the spring. Even after shortening the spring, we still have quite a bit of length and tension on it, so there won't be any issue with feeding rounds into the receiver. Now we'll screw on the mag tube extension. You can hear it locked down in place on those detents like we talked about. For the front sight upgrade on our home defense build, I've opted to use this XS Sight Systems Big Dot Front Sight only. Uh, this is a shotgun, not a sniper rifle. So what I really wanted out of my upgrade here was to have a very visible front sight only that would allow me to quickly and rapidly acquire a target as well as in low light situations. And this is your new sight picture. You can see how quickly you can spot the front sight and get on target. And our final upgrade that we're gonna make on our Home Defense 870 build is the simple addition of a tactical 4N flashlight. The mounting rail can be put on either side of this tactical 4N. I've mounted it on the left-hand side because I'm a right-hand trigger finger. So we're simply going to slide this onto the build. And by doing this, this allows me to have a flashlight that I can easily turn on and off while staying in a ready position. Okay, here's our finished product for our home defense build. The only part that didn't make it on today's shoot was the side saddle that unfortunately didn't come in in time. I'll be adding that at a later date and that'll give us an extra six rounds of capacity on our firearm. I am not providing any instruction or advising you what you should do with home defense strategies in any way. I am not a certified armorer and this video is simply provided as entertainment for you and me sharing my opinions with you and showing you what I am doing with my own personal weapon and the reasons that I'm doing it. Hey, thanks for watching today's video. I was first professionally trained with the Remington 870 in the early 1990s and relied on it daily in my prior profession for a cumulative career that lasted over 20 years. Um, it's a very effective weapon. It doesn't require a lot of gadgetry and spidey web shooters and all this kind of stuff mounted all over it to get the job done. I believe the changes and modifications that we made today address some of the weaknesses uh, due to the lower price point express model and some ergonomics that custom tailor the weapon to my personal build. Remember, if you like today's video, to hit the subscribe and like button down below. Those things help us out with the channel. And as always, remember, get ready so that you and your family can succeed and thrive.